great. It's a pleasure to be here. Guys, you're also serious. I hardly hear any laughs or anything joyful. What's wrong with software asset management? Is it going to die or does it have a future? Well, that is something I'm going to talk about uh, today. I think I'm seeing the wrong presentation down on the screen here. I need something to hang my presentation on. Good. There it is. So that's me. You recognize. I still look like my picture. Isn't that great? After that, those many years? That was me as a child. No, I'm just kidding. So I work as a global procurement and software asset manager. For me, that means I'm actually marrying the two areas that, for me, are very important to work together. As a procurement uh, specialist, I work with our global software and cloud agreements. On the other side, I now drive the software asset management strategy globally in Skanska. Uh, and that is both from which tooling we use, it's about which processes do we use. So I'm, ac I'm actually not telling our business units how to do SAM, I'm just telling them what. Uh, and then what I will be doing is checking whether they actually have the right things in place to do a proper software asset management function. If you think that software asset management is rewarding, do something else. Um, I decided seven years ago to do volunteer work. Uh, and at the moment, I'm a chairman of a charity in the local community where I work. And we started a second-hand shop where we employ people that have challenges to get into the market, to come back from being burnt out. They may have physical or mental disabilities. They have no place to work. If you think software asset management is challenging and rewarding, try volunteering. I can guarantee you it's challenging, but it's oh so much more rewarding than the professional life. And I do it with a lot of satisfaction. And if you see how that changes people's lives, you're, you're set forever. You're going to do it on and on and on. So I recommend, if you have a chance to volunteer and do something for other people without getting paid, do it. Skanska, in brief, I'll skip over the agenda because you will see anyway what I will be talking about when I come to the topics. It's a very old company. It started in 1887 in a Swedish area called Skåne. And those that are Swedish in the audience, they know Skåne. Yes, that's there. But try to get an, uh, an American to pronounce Skåne. It's impossible. So they took away the A with the O, and it became Skanska, which is far more easy to pronounce. And it has been an international business since 1887. Uh, and it started with concrete and not the concrete we know today to build buildings, but actually they were in making art out of concrete already in 1887. So the business has uh, grown a lot since then. Uh, it's a publicly noted company at the Stockholm uh, Exchange. I in Swedish krona, it exceeds 160 billion Swedish krona in revenue, which is roughly around 20 billion US dollars at the moment. Uh, we have around 40,000 employees globally, but we also have several hundred thousands of uh, subcontractors that work on construction sites. Uh, in Swedish, we call it underentrepreneur. So they actually work with us, but they have their own businesses or their other businesses. And they all have need of access to information. We are active on what we call our selected home markets, and that is in the Nordics in Central Europe, in the UK, and in the US. And as a true Swedish company, we call ourselves global. Um, so this is global. What we do, we are a construction company. So we have a number of business streams. One is construction, and we build everything from railways to roads to tunnels to infrastructure to uh, server halls, we, build, we, we are a data center, so we're building for Microsoft and for other major vendors in the US, for example. And we have our project development, which is residential. Um, it is commercial property, which is all about office buildings and uh, shopping malls and, and all of that, and infrastructure development. And one of the biggest projects we are working on at the moment is the rebuild of La Guardia Airport. In, in the US. 
So it's a big variety of different construction companies, sites, and every site is a, its own project. Every site will have its own IT. Skanska is a very decentralized organization, and I've heard that before during the yesterday evening and this morning that can you manage everything centrally? Uh, we can't, because decision-making is very local. It is within each of the business units and each of the countries. So me, as a global software asset manager, I have no say in where they buy their software, how they buy, and what they buy. The only, thing, only time when I have something to say is when we have global agreements, like Microsoft or Oracle or, or Salesforce, uh, Autodesk, you name it. Uh, and that's my area where we force our units to use. Uh, and I own the global tool, the global software asset management tool, so we have one tool to rule them all. You remember the ring? One ring to rule them all? This is the one tool to rule them all. We have a purpose, and our purpose is we build for a better society. And it's not only about sustainability, it's about diversity. It's about making sure that what we build today will not negatively uh, impact our children and the next generations. This is a very big and important statement for us. Now we come to the doom and gloom. Is Sam dead? Or are we looking at a new and improved Sam? What do you think? You're here, so you believe in Sam, right? Is, is that your future or is the other side your future? For me, the question is very simple. Because if you have a Sam organization build up today, that is still looking at the on-premise side, it's still looking at what you have deployed on site. Um, if that is what you think SAM is going to be in the future, the RIP, the RIP, will be the rest in peace, will be the recipe. Because I believe, and what I'm presenting today is my opinion, and you may disagree with me, is that a change is needed, particularly when you look at the transition to cloud. Because it will open up a whole different set of new challenges. If you look at mobile devices, remote access to information, if you look at legislation like the GDPR, to name one of them, if you look at information security, cybersecurity, which all is getting more and more difficult when you move into hybrid scenarios, when you move to the cloud, because suddenly you have moved from a, an environment that you're in control of, to an environment that someone else is in control of. The other element is that the vendors that you're using today may know what you have on your contract, but they have no information about how you use their software, what value you derive from it. But when moving to the cloud, suddenly the cloud vendors have all the information about what you're using, when you're using it, how you're using it, uh, whether you're overusing it, uh, you name it, they have the information, which result in a lot of different challenges than what we see today. And it's my opinion that we need to move to a new and improved SAM, which will need a change in competency. It will need a change in how your organization looks at SAM and the function it has. There it is. So for me, the current state of software asset management is all about risk and compliance management. On the right side, it's all about preventing risk. And preventing risk is governance, it's software selection. Um, it's also looking at how you get your software, because I've seen a number of vendors, uh, many vendors, have moved from distributing media to downloadable software. And guess what? When it's downloadable, they're already collecting information about you. Optimizing is important. And on the other side, you have the identifying risk. And there we have the tool sets that we have today. We have a lot of different tool sets, and I'm quite sure if I ask around, any of these tools will be in use uh, in any of the organizations. 
because the SAM tools are essential for discovery, for inventory, and identifying risk, uh, and then comparing that with your entitlements and ensuring that you can handle license audits. What I see today in our organization, and you probably remember or uh, recognize some of these names of vendors, um, I've already seen over a hundred different cloud vendors that have come into our organization. It can be through procurement organizations buying it, but it can also be through individual users signing up on their credit card for a service that they think they can need for their role. And then they claim it back to the organization. So if you do an inventory, and hopefully your software asset management tool has some functionality to identify cloud services, you will see a big list of cloud vendors there. The difficulty that I see and that I notice is that I can no longer see the difference between a person using it privately or whether they're using it commercially. Take Google, Google Drive or Dropbox or um, some of those, those services. Everybody is using them in private. They may log on to their work computer when they're at work to get a file of their own. They may even start using it to share information with one another. So I can't see the difference anymore. The only thing I can see is somebody is using it. What risk does that mean? What risk does that mean for information security? What risk does that mean for you being non-compliant with the terms and conditions between private use and commercial use? I don't know what it looks like in your company, but it probably also looks very much similar to what we see. For me, the change when it comes to, when it comes to cloud is there's risk management was the previous one, which is still valid, but I see a completely new element being added that we haven't had before. And that's all about usage analysis and data protection. So suddenly where I had risk prevention previously on the slide, now it's all about compliance, security, and data protection. Because, like I said previously, the data is no longer under my control. It's no longer on my computers. It's no longer on my servers. It is at a third party, suddenly. Vendors have also started to behave completely different when it comes to cloud services. Because if you have information out there, it will become far more difficult to reclaim your information. A couple of weeks ago, I had uh, a representative from Dropbox calling me. And he said, Taco, your organization, we have five, 6,000 users in your organization that are using Dropbox. You have no commercial agreements. You, all you only have personal use there. And then he said, well, guess what? You have over 15 terabyte of files out, th out there on Dropbox. And then I started to think, personal accounts, no security, no backup. What information is out there that I don't know about or my security guys don't know about? And suddenly I have a problem because I can't cut off the users from using Dropbox because there is 10 terabyte or 15 terabyte of data there. I can't easily reclaim the data because I don't know who owns it, because I can't really see who is using it, because that would violate GDPR if a vendor is giving me information. So on one hand, it becomes uh, governance and compliance. I think compliance is becoming far more complex and we underestimate the compliance aspect of moving to the cloud. And risk is changing from hybrid, hybrid use to security issues to uh, information protection areas. On the other hand, I've seen all the vendors coming with their own tool to manage the cloud environment. And uh, for, the, for those SAM tool vendors that are here in the room or in the, uh, the lounge there, I think they're lagging behind with the market. Because I have not seen one tool that can actually integrate with all the major vendors. Because ideally, as a SAM person, I want to have one tool where I can gather the information and manage the risk. 
They're getting there, but it's not going fast enough, at least not from my perspective. So, where are we? On the left-hand side, we have the traditional SAM functions that you all are aware of, but for me, it's marrying the standard SAM functionality that we have today, which is all about license and entitlement management and inventory, with the advisory role around client licensing, profiling, usage analysis, cost optimization. And last but not least, how do you do your provisioning and user account management in assigning sus subscription licenses to users? How do you know that the license that you have or your colleague has is effectively used? And how do you do your onboarding and offboarding process? That becomes more complex. At least, that's my opinion. So for me, this is about the new ecosystem. And why do I call it a new ecosystem? It's because I believe that the interaction the SAM function needs to have is, is increasing with more departments that we may not have dealt with before. Uh, and this is just a selection of it. Um, and what I see is particularly on the right side, the left side of the, the right side of this, is that senior management constantly underestimates the value of software asset management. So with the change to cloud, I think we have a renewed opportunity to position SAM in a very effective way. But you have to do it, because if you don't do it, another group in your organization will start to do it. And then you're back to one of my first slides that says that SAM is doomed to be dead. So I think there's opportunity here. What do I see some common misunderstandings? When I walk around and I ask about my organization, I ask other, others about, what do you see? They say, cloud services, it's easy. It doesn't need a SAM function, right? Compliance risks, there are no compliance risks anymore because it's so simple. Um, there's no need to analyze and optimize tools and cost. You have a simple paper usage model, right? So what do you think? Is this right or is this wrong? Because if this is right, then there's no future of SAM. I totally disagree with these statements because I've seen the proof of it that it's different. I see that my organization responds differently when I start to talk about these topics and they start to understand that there is something to do. So what opp opportunity exists? First of all, it's all about understanding what you have today. Because if you don't know what you have today, you will not be in a good position to negotiate with the vendors that is moving to cloud. Because you can leverage, like the previous speaker said, you can leverage the assets that you have at least once in an upcoming negotiation. It may be gone after that, but at least you have had your chance once. I think that SAM should be embedded and work much closer with procurement, with IT governance, um, and cloud management processes. SAM, for me, is a core function. It's no longer just a function that sits in, in, the, in the corner somewhere. It needs to be there on the prime stage. What about policies? How we govern the cloud? Around how do we provision and release cloud services? I've seen SAM organizations <coughs> not having visibility of the, the agreements, not having visibility of what is it actually that we are entitled for. That needs to change also with, with the, the cloud world. Mobile devices, new era, new area, because that's where both private and, and, and uh, corporate will marry, because there, I have one device. It's my private device, it's my work device. So it's marrying the two. How do you manage that? And then shadow IT and shadow cloud. And I call it shadow cloud because I refer to it to people buy cloud services on their credit card. They subscribe to, to it without you knowing. As we have shadow IT today. Those are opportunities that I see where SAM can grow and can be more important and show why it is so important that we have a SAM organization. But it, it means 
at least my opinion again, that we have to need, we have to have a competency shift, because the competency shifts from entitlement compliance to to cost containment, from entitlement reconciliation and inventory to consumption and usage analysis. Audits, they will change in nature, but they will still be there. At least, again, my opinion. I don't think audits and companies coming to us with audit requests will disappear, but they will change in nature. They will become more complex. Hybrid environments. I guess all of you have hybrid environments. That is a nightmare, at least from my perspective, because you have to be so detailed in the terms and conditions to understand in what combination you are allowed to use what. As well as the collaboration with your cybersecurity and information security officer, with your data protection officer, uh, an understanding of data and protection security, data security and protection that is needed. Those are new areas that I believe the SAM function should be educated in, because without that, it's doomed to die. So conclusions and summary. For me, the SAM function is more important than ever, ever before. Senior IT management needs to pay attention to SAM because the ecosystem is changing. It means if they don't understand, they're missing an opportunity and they're creating a big risk for their organization. Process and guidelines will help, but they definitely do not solve the problem. You need to be out there. Compliance risks do not disappear, but they change in nature. You need to change the competency and you need to have the right set of tools that will help you in the, in the new SAM environment. And like I said before, collaboration between SAM and other teams for me is imperative. How they work together, how you together can realize the value of SAM. And that was my last slide. So I managed, I've got three, four minutes left for questions. Great. Are there any questions? <laughs>